He is Baseball Hall of Famer, 14-time All-Star, Johnny Bench. How are you, Johnny? Thank you, Rich. I'm doing great. Do you remember the pitch you hit out on Vonner? High fastball. I, I just figured he was going to try to overpower it. It went in the upper deck, and it went into the tunnel. It actually went through the exit. And it was the longest home run probably I ever hit, and probably the longest home run they ever saw yeah. in Tiger Stadium. Until. Until. <laughs> <laughs> until. Until I called that slider down and in from Doc Ellis to, to Reggie, and he almost took the light standard out. Yeah. Uh, he, he, went, was, he, went, he went Roy Hobbs. He went natural on yeah, it right there. Yeah, 33, 33 Hall of Famers in that game. Ooh. 30. Wow. Three. Yeah, I mean, you go wow. down, you saw Stargell and I walk in. Here it is, right here. Yeah. We're supposed to queue it up here. Yeah, no, yeah. That's uh that's Reggie. Reggie took one right out. And so you you uh 33 33 Hall of Famers Hall of in that Famers game. Yeah, I mean they there. had you know Stargell, Mays, McCuffey, Aaron, K Line. You can go down the list. But it was just and Brooks Robinson was there. Right. Because my first at bat, I you know, this is after the 70 World Series, after Brooks had or stolen everything, or maybe mm-hmm. it was 72, and stolen everything. And the first ball I hit is a line shot and he backhands it and throws it to first. I mean, and I'm just running up and down the line, going, "Why now? Why right. again?" Mm-hmm. Do you still dream of this stuff, Johnny? That you're playing? I mean, when you go to sleep at night, you wake up. <laughs> I'm, I'm just <laughs> no, wondering. I no, mean, I've got you... a, I've got eight and twelve year old boys that I. Uh, have so you don't sleep at all, is what you're saying? No, they're good. They're really good. Okay. But I, uh, I'm a used. You know, I, I did it. You know, I played it. I did it, and everything else. And you know, you watch the home runs now. Last night, I watched the derby. It was fabulous, and I enjoy, I enjoyed every part of it. I enjoy what these kids are doing today. I, you know, I heard part first part of it is how do we make baseball fun again and what's wrong with baseball. I don't see anything wrong with baseball. I think it's, you know, when we played, there were 45 seconds between commercials. So you ran out, got ready, and threw your pitches, and you played. And so, But if you take now two, two minutes and 20 seconds, which now it was for a while, and they're trying to cut that back, you had an hour and 15 minutes. That's three, three minutes almost per inning to nine innings. You got 27 minutes extra just for commercial time. So you wind up now with a game that's two hours and 40 minutes and now runs into 310. And I don't, still don't know what people have to do, that the, why they have to rush home or anything else. I mean, what's so important that you can't sit there and watch the closer come in and why can't you see a rally coming and doing something and enjoy the intricacies of it? Now, do the guys step out, fix their gloves and scratch their jocks and do all this stuff too much? Yeah, they are. But, you know, they, they've been trained now psychologically by their sports therapist that they need to really re, 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 redirect and re, refocus. And so they get out there, and now they're thinking about all the hitting things and everything else, and they're going back to the videos of what they what they de- guy did to him last time. It's 2-0. and oh, Okay, let's see, 2-0 and oh, three weeks ago he threw me this. I mean, they think of that. I, I That's that's the thing that bothered me. Most is just guys stepping out. Would you have been a, even a better baseball player if that technology was available to you, no. do you think? No. I knew what was coming. Or guessed. <laughs> I like to guess. I like to look. Mm-hmm. You know, I tell tell guys, even today, I said, what do you look for on the first pitch? And some teams say we take the first strike because we know we like to get deep in the count. We want to work the pitcher. Right. Well, I'm saying, okay, but if the first pitch is your pitch, because in the major leagues, you may see one pitch every at bat if you're lucky. And so why wouldn't you set on that pitch, whether it be a hanging curveball? Because I look curveball and hit fastball because I knew I could adjust that quickly. And so I, I said, here's the pitch. And if it was bad, I took it, and then I rezoned him. And I, I it worked out great. Well, you see all the binders like that a lot of these managers have, and they're making notes, and they're, they're taking stuff out of their pocket <laughs> and writing stuff down, and, and that there's all of these analytics about uh, that, that, that create what we've seen this year a couple of times, like the Tampa Bay Rays starting their closer mm-hmm. a couple of times because yeah. they figure it's beneficial with the top of the order and then bringing somebody. With all that information, what would Sparky Anderson have been like with that information if it was ever presented in front of Sparky in the middle of the 70s, Johnny? Well, Sparky, you know, somebody said, how do you judge talent, Sparky? Mm -hmm. And he went. (laughs) Pointed to his eye. He pointed to his eye, and he said, this is the way I can see talent. But Sparky used to call Pete, Joe, Tony, and myself in as a group or individually, and they would say, what about if we trade for this guy? And we would say no. Well, what about this guy? Yes. Because we knew kind of like what his talent and ability was. He would call you guys in, I guess, some of the bigger names of Big Red Machine. Yeah. To ask you your thoughts on what a front the front office might well, do. Well, we were better whatever. scouts than anybody. <laughs> I mean, you don't need you can have a guy up there with a stopwatch. We didn't have to have a stopwatch. We knew this guy had ball movement in his own, or he was able to 
to fit into a situation. Like you know, it's just important to have a second place hitter as an eighth place hitter. It's just important to have Terry Crowley and Merv Redman on the bench and, yes. and Bill Plummer coming off to catch and Doug Flynn. These are guys that had to fill in and were they ready when they were called upon. So their role was just as important, and we had to find out who these people are. Johnny Bench here on the Rich Eisen Show, and we'll talk about the Johnny Bench Scholarship Fund um, in, a, in a few minutes here. Uh, so the Home Run Derby, did you ever take part in anything like that? Any Every day on batting practice. <laughs> we, we, you know, you bunt two, yes. you get it, you know, hit, hit, hit and run, yes. get him over, and then see how far you could hit it. I mean, it was like in <laughs> Chicago, we we tried to break out the windows. We would break out the windows across the street. So, I mean, they talk about these guys, how far they hit it. I mean, we was we knocked out windows across the street. And people would – there were other teams would actually come out and watch us take batting practice because this wasn't anything about, you know, keep inside and keep your hands inside the ball, do the stuff and – I don't know if you know that in a 90 mile an hour fastball, you have 0.42 seconds from the time it leaves the pitcher's hand till it crosses home plate. You have 0.17 seconds react react to it, and how you make the decision where the camera sends the signal, the brain sees it, it's got to send the to the ner- to the nerves and muscles, and you react. So when you start saying, "I've got to," no, I better stay inside the ball, and then you go to the bench, and the guy said, "You should have hit that the other way." Well, next time up there, you're thinking, "This is about hitting the ball." And seeing the ball and hitting as hard as you can. And in situations you know what you have to do. Uh, we had guys that, you know, could flat hit. And they didn't go up there and say, let's get deep in the count. It wasn't trying to get this pitcher to throw deep. We didn't care. We wanted to get this guy as many runs as we could in the first few innings and then work from there. Was there such a thing as pitch count when you played, though? No, no. Right? I mean, Jim Maloney, are one, of the, one of the great right-handers, if you ever look it up, one of the great right-handers in the history of baseball. Right. He threw a 10-inning no-hitter. He walked 10, he hit one, he threw 187 pitches, and then he pitched his rotation on the fourth day. How was he? Is Great. He, no problem? Great. I so mean, then, but, I mean and, uh, but we're supposed to get bigger, stronger, faster as a human race. We see it. I certainly see it in the NFL. What, oh, yeah. What, so why what, what, can arms no longer handle that anymore? I think, I think ownership changes it and medicine changes how, it. How so? What do you mean by Because that? you go in and say, I got a twinge. Well, we better take an MRI. Well, you have just a slight little fiber off there. Well, I mean, in those days, we used to take capsule and abilene cream and rub it and get the hot <laughs> stuff until you couldn't stand it, and you went out and you pitched. It, it was it was uh, it was just you knew you had to play, you know. Otherwise, <clears throat> you would have wound up without a job. Hmm. And so I saw you were nodding your head um, a couple of times when I was, and I'm not just saying that because I want Johnny Bench to say to the mic. That but you were saying the right thing about what I was saying at the top of the show here is that I, I, I want to see more of the stars of the game out there, right? I mean, Bryce Harper, in my mind, should be – his face should be everywhere today in front of a microphone talking about last night. Yeah, he won he me should, over a lot last night. How, what do you mean by that? Well, I've never – you know, I've seen all the coverage of him, and sometimes we – social media and now the media itself can is focused on that. It's like the managers now you see, well, they don't have any reaction because – You've got one camera totally focused on them. So if they make a move, <clears throat> excuse me, if make a move or do something wrong, it's usually shown that night because we're going to be showing it and replaying it and replaying it that he was upset at this guy and how his reaction was. So guys basically aren't going to expose themselves. We see it in golf. Golfers now have no emotion, but if they know that they are, I mean, they, you know, we're going to show it. You know, he's upset with it. So they've been they're protecting themselves. Plus, they got so much money, they don't need a, a PR campaign. You know, they, they're making hundreds of million dollars. I made 2.2 in my entire career. Your entire playing <clears throat> career? Yeah. So I started off at 11,000. Is that why you were doing stuff like the baseball bunch? Well, I'm bunch? always promoting I mean, myself. Is that what, is that what Yeah, you're... but I wasn't afraid. You know, I had like the baseball bunch games people play. Right. I had, uh, you know, golf in paradise. But it was the way I had to make. I made more money in the offseason than I did playing. Just because, you know, and I'm trying to, but people wanted me and I wasn't afraid to do it. So I was promoting myself. Now these guys, if you've got, you know, you're making $2 million a week, every other week. Now they can, they don't really have to go out and promote or anything else. They can stay right there and, and, and protect themselves. And people are, you know, people are after you a lot. You know, you go out, have a drink at a, at a restaurant. Some Red Sox fan doesn't like a Yankee fan. And he, and he tweets or calls and said, 
Johnny Bench is driving drunk. I mean, so you you face that these days. And so these guys are really protecting themselves. And they've got, you know, they got their posses. They got their agent. You know, they got somebody saying you need to do this and somebody saying you need to be there. Mm-hmm. And so they become isolated in so many ways. That's a bummer. Well, a little bit of a bummer. I mean, um, you know, I because I, I'd love to get to know, I, again, that, but that's me. I understand I'm not living the life that you've just described, you know. You found out about it, though. True. Recognition, uh, things that you do. Well, I guess so. No, no. I'm, okay. But what I mean is I guess um, I'm still out there. I know that that's maybe why that helps put a roof over my head. But and, and I understand that a show that I do right here, like I'd love to just be sitting next to Bryce Harper in hour number three talking about last night, you know. But yeah. it, so I understand that I, I do have my own agenda when I have this. When I say but this, everybody but, wants a part of you as a player. You know, you want Bryce on this show. Dan wants his Bryce. Sure. You want this and that. And then the local guys wants to do it. And then you, I mean, you looked down on the crowd last night and how many media people were there? Tons. And they all want something. And you can't always share it. So sooner or later, you basically just said, well, I can't do anything or I won't do anything. Well, I want to take a break, uh, be back in 60 seconds, stroll down a little bit more of uh, All-Star Memory Lane, and then get into this poll question a little bit more about who you'd want to build a team around. Oh, gosh, we could talk about those things because that's the great thing about baseball. You know, the guys sit around and always kibitz about who does this and who's the trade and who's going to make a better better player. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when he, when he talks about Judge, yeah, I mean, he's a guy that's a personality. He plays with personality. We'll talk about it after we come back from a break. You want to throw to 60? Say, you want to do this back right, in we'll 60 We'll be seconds? back in 60 minutes here on the Rich Eyes no, Show. Don't seconds, go away. Seconds, 60 seconds. No, I want to talk a minute, okay, right? Okay. <laughs> Stay with us right here. Come back, grab something. Back on the Rich Eyes and Baseball Bunch. Johnny Bench here uh, for another segment on the uh, Rich Eyes and Show. Okay, ask the poll question of Johnny Bench, Chris Brockman. Go for All it. All right, here. Mr. Bench, who would you build your franchise around? Mookie Betts, Bryce Harper, Aaron Judge, Manny Machado, Mike Trout. Mike Trout. You didn't stutter. No, no. And Machado. Um, but if you had I'd, to choose one, it would be Trout. I'd love Trout. What do you love about him? I just love his whole thing. He's a kid playing baseball. You know, everything about him is running around the bases, going into the dugout, and putting his head down. He hits home run. He puts his head down. He runs around the bases. Doesn't try to show up anybody. He plays the outfield as hard as he can play it. He jumps over over the deal. But he's just, he's an inspiration to kids. He's like, this is fun. I still love playing the game. And Machado is so talented. Judge is a guy that I, I really enjoy. Yeah, he strikes out too much. But, you know, he's still close to 300. And he hits the long ball. He can do it. He's in the clutch situations. Um, who we got else? Betts? Betts, yeah. Amazing what he's doing. Hitting 367 or something. He's close to that. Um, no, you know who the, the the real guy up there is, J.D. Martinez. What do you like about him? Stud, man, stud. You put it on the line, he'll do it. I mean, look at what he did in Arizona. You know, he turned that team around too because you got to have somebody in the middle of that lineup that you can rely on. And those guys really make it easy for him because a veterinary, veterinary, Ben Attendee. Ben Attendee, great little kid to watch him. I love to watch him. I like bets. They set it up for him, and this guy, when it comes down to it, he takes a load off the back of the lineup, but he drives in. He's got, what, 80 RBIs already? Well, and then, you know, and then there's a guy who got the award for most votes. Ready? And no, Altuve. Altuve. Oh, yeah, I, could, I watch him every day. I don't care. I check the box scores. I'm a box score guy. Yeah. I will watch Altuve's everything. Here he is, another 130 hits already. Amazing. Just what is you? What does Morgan think of him? Do you talk baseball with Joe when you get a chance? You know, Joe. Joe and I don't talk a lot. But we love him, but Joe. You know, Joe's gone through a lot of you know with the Health. bone marrow. Yep. And uh, he's great now. He's walking without his cane. He's got it. And I, you know, we talk. And his mother passed away. And I want to say, Joe. You know, I talk talk to you, but uh, still, my my sympathies go out. And to I him. told you off the air. You know, when I first got TSPN, I'm a 26 year old kid and loving baseball. That's what I did. For ESPN more than any other sport, and Joe was great to me. He is a great. He was great. He was, to great. Me. He was great was in the great locker room. He me. was really the change that made the difference in our ball club. Him and John Miller were just maybe the best ball player I've ever played with or seen. Was Joe Morgan? Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, steal a base, get a walk, Gold Glove, and if it was on the line, he'd drive in the run. So there wasn't anything he couldn't do, and he understood how to do it. So you choose Trout <laughs> to build your your team around. Uh, who's the best catcher in the game today? 
Johnny? Well, probably Salvador Perez is probably the best defensive catcher. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll never get the recognition unless you put the offensive numbers up. You know, sure. Real Muto down in Miami. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He was like fifth in the voting. He's hitting over 300, 45 RBIs. What do you think of Sanchez? Is he he's, he still needs to move around the plate a little bit. Well, everybody block. says that. You, right. you know, you got a pitching staff like that, and they throw me so many different pitches. Guys throw 200 pitches a game. And you wind up, well, he's got 15 pass balls, so what? I mean, you know, these guys cross you up or they move it or some ball does something. Right. It's hard. He's a big guy, but he can he can hit. he got a great arm. And, uh, <clears throat> I, li I mean, I, obviously, I, li I like him a lot. And what do you think of the um, <clears throat> Buster Posey rule? Certainly since we're here in the All-Star game and we all know about <laughs> your colleague Pete Rose barreling into Ray Fossey. That's still a moment to this day that everybody keeps talking about. Do you like that rule, player safety rule put in place uh, in baseball? Well, Bruce yeah. called me, Bochy called me. Now, Bruce had had three catchers carried off the field. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where, you know, some people don't like it. But <clears throat> today's game, you got guys that are 6'2", 220, rounding third base, and they're going to make sports center by knocking the catcher in the dugout. Well, you got all that equipment on. Yeah, you got a piece of that for a chest protector, and you got everything else exposed. And these guys come flying in there. And, <clears throat> you know, why now we can't take out the second baseman in a double play. I mean, that's changed. But it, it's proved that it, it's it's helped. It's such a funky rule about how to block the plate. I never stood on the line anyway. I always stood out in front of the plate because I wanted them on the ground. If they see the home plate, they'll slide. You don't see too many guys today that don't slide. And that's because they see home plate. But if you're standing in the line blocking home plate, people are going to start about thinking about knocking you in the dugout from 90 feet away, and they got a full head of steam. So I don't know why, you know, we I've got I got hit in midair. I got I got a, I had a whole cleat mark on my on my uniform where guys hit me in the midair, and you know, if they hit me the wrong way, I'm out for the rest of the year. Right. And then I'm having I've had no knee surgeries, and by that time I you've had, had no knee surgeries, no. Johnny Bench. Ever. No, I was a really smart guy. <laughs> I, kept, I kept my foot pointed at the runner, so he had to go up the shin guard. Well, I got to tell you, too, some of the best running backs in the history of the National Football League, the, the uh, most yards and longevity, knew how to get hit, knew how to move their body to avoid the hit, also knew that if I went in this hole based on the defense that I saw before the snap, I'm going to get my head knocked off, so I'm going to choose this hole. I'm going to get down now. I'm going to – I mean – it, 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 you know it how takes, to take it. it. Yeah, it's, there's a certain professionalism in understanding the game that keeps you healthy, too. Well, I mean, there's just guys that, you know, I the quads are everything for the knees. The stronger the quads, the better the knees. Mm -hmm. They will support them. So if you ever have a knee problem, you want to build up your quads. Kids that are going to catch, build up your quads, and you will do it and learn, and you will not have nearly as many knee injuries, and you won't be squatting down and putting so much pressure on it because the quads will actually support it. What would you say to Pete after uh, he blew up Ray Fossey? He comes well, back to the dugout. Well, you know, Pete had had Ray out to dinner that night before at his house. Yeah. So they were good friends. If you watch it close enough, and you've seen it so many times, Pete starts the head first slide. And when he started the head first slide, here's Fossey's shin guard standing right there. And he almost had a little stumble and then came up because he couldn't head first slide. And then it was, but it's, a you know, the game's on the line. The, the game is on the line. And you look mm -hmm. at him, he's saying, are, are you all right, Ray? Mm -hmm. Watch him. He starts to see how he starts to. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. There he goes down. Yeah, we, Pete. We, Pete we I mean, that's us, though. But the game is on the line, so you've got to do something with it. I got ran into similar to that by uh, Gary Matthews in 1975. Mm -hmm. I had six quarter zone shots every three weeks to finish the season. Jeez. Because they tore up the AC joint, the, the cartilage in between the acromio and the cavicular, and they tore it up. And uh, but I had to finish the season, and then I had the surgery after the season was over. But I mean, we're going we're going to get banged, we're going to get hit, and so I, I like it actually. I, I like the way it is. The Johnny Bench, the Johnny Bench Scholarship Fund, uh, JB Five F. dot org. What's that all about, Johnny? Yeah, S Five is. Uh, I there. I got. I didn't go to college. I really wanted to go to college. Part of my signing bonus is six thousand dollars in cash, a bonus check, mm -hmm. and then one thousand dollars for each semester because I was going to go to college. I felt like I needed to. And then, so when I retired, 
I hadn't been because I went to Winter Ball Instructional League every year. And then by that time, I was established, and I couldn't go back. And so I said, uh, we want to give you something. I said, well, I'd like to start a scholarship fund. So we have uh, – I started with it. I had a golf tournament. I donate from – I had 250000 from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire that we, we gave to it. Mm-hmm. And we've got uh, a minimum of usually 80 to 80 students a year that are on scholarship from Cincinnati and Binger. Oklahoma, and uh, they've had to play sports. They're not going to play sports in college necessarily, but they've had to play sports. And if they're local enough that they get an education, usually they'll stay in the area they are, and the city becomes better because of their education. Johnny Bench, National Baseball Hall of Famer, first ballot, 96.42% of the vote. Do, do we know who the uh, 3.58 like <laughs> people are? Percent? No, a lot of guys wouldn't vote first first ballot because they'll – like Ruth didn't make it or whatever. And, you know, at the end of the year, into my career, I played, I, I moved to first and third. Guys did it. Guys, they may have had a vendetta. I might not have talked to certain reporters. I mean, you know, how, how Ted Williams was when he went, didn't win the MVP mm. when he hit 403 or 40, 401. He didn't get, the two New York writers didn't vote for him that year. And he didn't win the MVP. DiMaggio won it there. So you can, you can upset a reporter. For whatever reason, mm. and you know that's what it is. But I got in. Yes, you did. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got the ring. And, it's you know, on your left hand right it, now. And, and if so, you know whether it's a vote or not or whatever. I mean, it's such. A, it's just one of the greatest honors in, in life. Well, Johnny, thank you for coming on here. Pleasure. By the way, thanks for the batter up idea <laughs> yeah. years ago in my backyard. You weren't the dad, one with the aluminum bat. I'm not the one with the aluminum bat <laughs> that you say some kid took it out and then there was a liability issue that took. That, that I guess that sat down the batter up, that benched the batter yeah. up. Hey, can we can we answer the is the poll question Go still there? Yeah. I mean, what, do you, what, what, what do we got? What are the results? What are the results play? so far? Look up Johnny Bench, Chris Brock. Go ahead, ask Chris Brock before the uh, results over there. Uh, Johnny Bench, uh, Mike Trout leading away right now, sixty eight percent. You put your thumb on the scale, who's Johnny, next? Johnny. Yeah, who's we got next? Let's yeah. get some See, numbers. Yeah, who's on the bottom? Let's go. Uh, Mookie uh, on the bottom, Manny Machado, milk two percent, and then. And everyone else in the middle, 10%, Mookie Betts, Bryce Harper, Aaron Judge. Okay. There you go. One again. Machado News, <laughs> when we come back, apparently yeah, he's, he's on the move. The Dodgers. I don't know. Yankees. We'll have we'll find that. We'll we'll do our best to find that out. Uh Pudge Rodriguez, <laughs> the commissioner of baseball, Rob Manfred, and Al Leiter still to come. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on audience. <laughs> 